Mas Dedi Mas Dedi conseguiu tirar daqui o volume de ouro que tirou Mas Dedi Mas Dedi Most of the people who laid the foundations of the modern Americas were of African origin. Of the 6.5 million people who crossed the Atlantic during the first 300 of the 500-year history of the modern Americas, only 1 million came from Europe. 5.5 million people were brought from Africa during the inhuman commerce and human lives known as the transatlantic slave trade. Africans enslaved in the Americas were forced to do the work of building the European colonies that became the American republics. Some Africans were selected specifically for their technological expertise. Africans had been working with iron for thousands of years, and their descendants continued to make both useful objects and beautiful works of art. You look around the wall here, this is some of my work in that 72 years. I went in the blacksmith shop to shoe hall. I didn't dream I would be making gifts, things like these, things like this. African knowledge helped feed the Americas with rice domesticated more than 3,000 years ago in West Africa. U.S. plantation owners asked slave ship captains to bring them skilled rice negroes. The Portuguese enslaved Africans from what was called the Gold Coast to mine gold in Brazil. They said these Africans, whom they called mining Negroes, had an almost magical luck in finding gold. Luck or expertise? Toda a tecnologia empregada aqui na extração do ouro, ela é devido a esse conhecimento africano. Eles precisaram dessa mão de obra especializada. Então eles vão numa região específica da África, que é a região que a gente chama de Costa da Mina, né? E já tinha grandes reinos no passado que faziam uso desse ouro, né? Aí a gente fala do, do reino Achante, né? Do grande reino do Mali também. Não fosse a presença africana, não fosse o saber e o conhecimento trazido pelos africanos, que embora não tenham chegado aqui como mão de obra escravizada, Portugal jamais teria conseguido tirar daqui o volume de ouro que tirou. In Ecuador, descendants of mining Negroes still pan gold and transform it into beautiful creations like those of their African ancestors. By the end of the 19th century, 12 to 15 million Africans had been scattered throughout the Americas. More than 200 million African descendants now live throughout the Americas, some in unexpected places. Los afros ya estamos, estamos visibilizándonos, ¿no? porque obviamente habíamos vivido siempre desde cuando la colonia, pero 
estábamos como cultos, no, no, no estábamos eh, mostrando nuestra identidad. Pero ahora estamos muy visibilizados ya, en cambio estamos reconocidos por la nueva Comisión Política del Estado, entonces estamos incluidos en, en lo que es eh, Bolivia. Across Africa, people play the game of sophisticated mathematical strategy that in some places is called wari. The game is one of the many elements of their cultures that Africans brought with them to the Americas. Wari is still played in the Caribbean, most prominently on the island of Antigua. I asked the Prime Minister to tell me one thing that Africans in Antigua have something tangible that they have now that they brought from Africa. And a woman shout out in the crowd, Wari! <laughs> Jawara, who was a math teacher in Antigua, brought his knowledge and skills to the United States. He makes Wari boards and plays and teaches the game on the street in Harlem. Antiguans believe that Wari is their game. Some, some Antiguans believe that there's no other people on earth that plays Wari. <laughs> okay. So, the object of the game is to capture 25 seeds on the opponent's side of the, of, the, of the board. You have six houses, these are called houses. Six times four is 24 house seeds on your side. To make a play, you will take all the seeds up from any one of your houses. So take up, make a choice, mm -hmm. and you place one seed in the net and one... Yes, I used to play when I was a child. Yes, absolutely. But it's all over when you go to Africa. It's everybody in the street play. It's very common. Ah, you made it. Yes, of course. Yes. That's why everybody in Africa play this because it's very. Um, Antigua is the only place where the players are buried with this board. When they died, they made sure that they took one of these um, warrior boards to heaven. <laughs> Almost half of the Africans who arrived in the Americas came from the Central African region of the Kingdom of Congo and some African diaspora communities perpetuate Congo royal pageantry. For centuries, the Congo kingdom was respected in the Atlantic world as an African Christian kingdom. Such esteem was reflected in European artists' portrayals of Congo diplomats. This bust of a Congo diplomat who traveled to the Vatican in the 1600s for an audience with the Pope is in the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome. In the Americas, in spite of slavery, African descendants perpetuated memories of royal traditions from the Kingdom of Congo. This reenactment of a 19th century Congo ceremony begins with a contradance from European royal courts. And quickly segues into much more African rhythms and movements. Brazilians in the state of Minas Gerais portray the pageantry of the royal courts of the kings and queens of Congo. Delegations come from afar seeking blessings from Afro-Brazilian Congo kings and queens. Oh, 
tabuleiro, a rainha de aberto, o povo massa In Panama, Congo ceremonies are less formal and more playful, with Congo royals dancing exuberantly to drumming of African origin. Some people characterize Panama's Congo celebrations as a parody of the Spanish monarchy. A more plausible interpretation is that, as elsewhere in the Americas, they represent a continuity of the Congo monarchy. The African diaspora does not just exist in the Atlantic world or the Americas. It is global. On South Pacific islands that Europeans called Melanesia for the melanin-rich skin of their inhabitants, people whose ancestors settled there thousands of years ago identify with global African diasporan culture. Africans were enslaved on Indian Ocean Islands to work on plantations, as in the Americas. Et pas pillé à travers le monde, que ce soit aux Caraïbes, en Amérique euh, ou ailleurs, à Maurice, dans les îles de l'océan Indien. Africans were also enslaved across the Mediterranean Sea to Turkey during the Ottoman Empire. Bu insanları bir araya toplamanın, bu insanlarla bir arada konuşmanın, bu insanlarla birçok sorunu paylaşmanın yolunun dernek olduğunu bildiğim için dernek girişimi olarak yola çıktım ve 2006 sonlarında Afrikalılar Kültür Dayanışma ve Yardımlaşma adı altında Arkadaşlar, 7. Dana Bayramı başlamıştır. Tüm halkımıza Dana Bayramı bir yıl boyunca sağlık, mutluluk ve bol verim vermesini dilerim. Herkesin Dana Bayramı'nı kutlarım. She's uh, she's happy to be there. <laughs> she likes it. Neden diyor işte because she said we are coming all together. We are seeing each other, talking and sharing something. So she she's happy about that. <laughs> all the black people are celebrating, and she's saying to anyone. Renklerimiz bir ya. Renklerimiz bir. Onun sebepleri. We are. Karımız kaynıyor. Same color. Our blood is is like same. So, <laughs> so that's why. <laughs>
India offers a variety of African diasporan experiences that contrast with and complement those of the Americas. Some people are come from Sudan, some people are come from Ethiopia. In Africa, my father told me that they came from Sudan. Now my father's, father's, grandfather's, they're all from Africa. Now they live here, here we have become like Indians now. So many cities are India, in India. We are uh, African Indians. Tens of thousands of Afro-Indians, known as Siddhis, whose ancestors came from East Africa, form distinct communities in several states. Until India's independence, Siddhis were palace guards for the Nizams, the rulers of the princely state of Hyderabad. I'm from Isigats in Hyderabad. During Nizam period, he brought some people from Africa for his army. In Ahmedabad, in Gujarat, the Siddhi Said Mosque, known for its lacy carved stone windows, bears the name of its 16th century creator, who came from Northeast Africa. On Maharashtra's Konkani coast, Siddhis were famous for centuries for controlling maritime traffic from their fort on Janjira Island which is now a national landmark. In Karnataka, Siddhis whose ancestors came from Southeast Africa live in rural areas. We Africans, they were brought here and they were stay. They just spread out in the forest. They celebrated the election of President Barack Obama, whom they consider one of their own people, proudly claiming him as an American Siddi. Wherever they were enslaved, Africans and their descendants resisted bondage. Centuries ago, some of them, referred to as Maroons, escaped to inaccessible places and created autonomous communities. Haiti's citadel is the world's greatest monument to the triumph of an enslaved population. Haitians defeated Napoleon's army, the most powerful army in Europe to free themselves and create the world's first independent black republic and the first government to outlaw slavery. On Mauritius and Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean, people enslaved by the British and French escaped to remote highlands to form free communities in rugged environments. I think the real cirque of Maronage in the Reunion is quand même the cirque of Mafra. Aujourd'hui, nous dans le site culturel, le paysage culturel du monde. C'est qu'à l'époque, durant l'époque de l'esclavage, durant la période française et britannique, il y en a à différents moments un groupe d'esclaves qui s'est sauvé des picots de Banmet pour venir trouver refuge dans la montagne là. Et dans un document historique, avec une interview qui nous fait avec Ben Dimoun qui fait de nous qui c'est là ce qu'il nous appelle la République des Marrons qui est installé dans la montagne. Là. Alors, ça, tout ça est bien important parce que le combat des marrons pour la, affirmer le statut d'être libre et d'être humain, c'est un combat qui est le premier phénomène dans l'île Maurice. Nous considérons ben, nous avons cette marron comme ben, une précurseur, ben, un pionnier dans la lutte pour la liberté. People in Colombia's Palenque de San Basilio celebrate their maroon heritage.
del fundador de los palenques, no solamente el palenque San Basilio, sino fue el hombre que junto a entre 36 y 37 hombres y mujeres que fueron desembarcados allí en la ciudad de Cartagena, huyeron hacia los montes y fundaron el palenque San Basilio. La mujer palenquera se caracteriza por ser trabajador, con su palangana a salir para Cartagena o otras ciudades de Colombia o otro país como Venezuela, Ecuador. Soy un hombre de virtudes, de lo que Dios me dio. Hay hombre mejor que yo y hay mujer mejor que tú. The marimbula is a version of the Central African instrument called mbira, sansa, and other names. Jamaica honors its freedom-seeking heritage by featuring its national heroine, Maroon leader Queen Nanny, on the bill that people call a nanny. And in the United States, Harriet Tubman led hundreds of people from slavery to freedom along secret paths of the Underground Railroad. Now she has public highways in her name. Spirituality is the realm in which African diasporan communities have best maintained ancestral worldviews and behaviors. In Salvador, capital of Brazil's state of Bahia, African divinities, the Orishas of the Yoruba people of Nigeria and Benin in West Africa, characterize the city's cultural and spiritual life. In spiritual ceremonies and secular performances such as this one, the Orishas dance cosmic choreographies, portraying their roles in nature and human life. Across the Indian Ocean, Afro-descendant communities also venerate spiritual beings of African origin. Baba Gore, the African saint of the Siddhis from Gujarat, comes from Abyssinia, or Ethiopia, in Northeast Africa. Baba Gore arrived in the village of Ratampur as an agate merchant 800 years ago. It's come from uh, <coughs> Babagore also had great spiritual powers, and Siddhis built a shrine in his honor. As guardians of the shrine, they share Babagore's blessings with fellow Siddhis and with other Indians. Babagore is now worshipped not only by Siddhis, but also by other Indians of various faiths. Because Iberian Catholics dominated the enslaving of Africans in the Americas, several Afro-descendant communities worship black Catholic saints. Patron saint of Palermo in Sicily, St. Benedict's parents, enslaved in Italy, were from Ethiopia. Como somos de la diáspora africana, entonces queremos conocer también las festividades que cada pueblo o región o territorio del, de esta Suramérica festejan a sus santos negros. Adopting these saints, Africans and their descendants also adapted them 
to an African understanding of how to celebrate them joyously. Balthazar, also from Northeast Africa, was the African of the three kings who the Bible said took gifts for the birth of Jesus. In the community chapel, Balthazar carries an incense burner, representing his gift of precious incense. Another segment of the Afro-Paraguayan community called Kambakwa, their name coming from the Bakamba people of the Republic of Congo, celebrates a different version of the saint. El Santo Negro, como ya decían, que es San Baltasar, uno de los tres reyes más. Eh, hace milagro. Pero hay gente que si ya le pidieron y le cumplió el milagro, por ejemplo, si alguien está enfermo, le, le pide y le, le, hace, le pide una, un milagro y le cumple una promesa que se recupere esa persona. This Balthazar carries not an incense burner, but a drum, called by the Central African Bantu term kandombe, that also designates the community's music and dance. Le gusta todo lo que es el tambor, el baile, todo eso le gusta. At midnight before Three Kings Day, January 6th, the Kambakwa begin to celebrate their African saint. The Kambakwa also organize an annual festival attended by thousands of people at which they honor their African saint. Saint Martin de Porres, the only black saint born in the Americas, is famous in his native Peru for his miraculous healing. In river communities in Esmeraldas province, in Peru's neighboring Ecuador, St. Martin also saves people from drowning. The communities organize a river procession to Canchimalero, partying their way to St. Martin's party. Las balsas hacen como forma de concurso, cuál es la mejor balsa, cuál es la que mejor tiene mejor presentación. Entonces, se, cada, por decir, cada parroquia se encarga de que su balsa sea bonita para que tenga buen éxito. The usual quiet village of Canchimalero explodes when thousands of people converge to celebrate their saint. Yo había viajado en muchos países en África, bastante. Pero la vida, celebrar con alegría, 
Eso es típicamente africano. Esta manera de vivir con la fiesta, con la alegría, eso es puramente africano, la danza. African descendants scattered around the world used vital ancestral memories and knowledge to help develop new societies as they incubated new identities and created exuberant cultural forms, insisting on celebrating life as they continue to enrich global civilization.